Welcome back, beautiful souls. This is actually part two. If you missed the other one, there's the link up above. Um, this is a continuation of discussing the idea of being gay and Christian and getting over this fear. So a lot of times my clients come to me for help with people pleasing. So this fits right in, right? Believing that everyone else has the answer instead of having a relationship with God ourselves. So last time, uh, just briefly, we discussed self-exploration as a step to getting over this fear, education, seeking support, and challenging, <laughs> my dog's getting all settled, negative beliefs that are coming up. So a lot of times, the negative beliefs will come, and then we'll just be a gracious host for them. We'll get them all settled in, see what their favorite snacks are, instead of challenging these negative beliefs because a lot of time what I find out is common with many of my clients is that when thinking about ourselves we are our biggest bully we will beat ourselves up the most but if we're thinking about someone else that we care for a, a child a grandchild a best friend a niece nephew whatever it is we are able to see it from a different viewpoint and give them grace and compassion and love. So starting to figure out and be aware if you are doing this to yourself, are you having the highest expectations for yourself, grace and compassion for others? So let's dive into four more steps that you can take to help get over this fear and realize that you can be the most amazing gay Christian out there. So when continuing with those four, number five is practicing self-compassion. Yep, I just dove into that just a little bit. But self-compassion involves uh, not having these high expectations for ourselves, uh, not trying to be perfectionists, um, and allowing both positive and negative feelings to occur and coexist. So it's okay to have questions. It's okay to have doubts. It's okay to get frustrated and confused. And it's just all a part of the journey, whether this is your specific journey or not, right? Welcoming questions and diving deeper. And last time when we talked about reaching out for support, that's part of it, right? Reaching out to people that you know and you love and you trust, or that you feel like, Maybe they're not in my little bubble and circle that's receiving the same information as me, but maybe I need to go out to a different um, church or scholar and hear from someone that has um, maybe had people in their congregation just like you and I. So be gentle with yourself throughout this journey, just like you would a child, a significant other. So the next one is connect with allies. So, woohoo, you found me. <laughs> Did you know I also have a Facebook group, a free Facebook group that I began with my pastor, one of my affirming pastors. And if you go to my site, Annie M. Henderson, or I believe go um, maybe to the links in the description, you can come and join that group. Definitely answer the questions because we want to make sure everyone's safe. Uh, but answer the questions, join the group, and then it's a great place to connect with others. It's not just in my local community of uh, North Texas. There's people all around the world. Um, you don't have to be uh, religious or Christian to be in that group. Some people are exploring, some people are uh, done, <laughs> right? They're stepping away from that, and that's okay. Wherever you are on your journey, you are welcome. On Sundays, I do typically share a recording of my church's service. So it's there. If you want to watch it, you don't have to. Some people are just it's such a desert in terms of having an affirming church near you. So sometimes it's nice to be able to just even have that experience. And there are several pastors in that group. So if you need to show up and ask questions or engage or just say, thank you for having this space. I'm, I'm glad to be here. Um, and there's some prompts in the group, but if that's not for you, right, find someone locally, find someone online, right? Just because maybe there's no one local that you can think of that might be gay and Christian. 
use the internet, use TikTok, use YouTube to find people that are like you. So you don't feel like a pariah or someone that um, is going against everything your family raised. So find those allies. And definitely, if you are new and you're watching this and you don't have anybody, one, let me know in the comments, say hi. <laughs> I bet there will be some other people in the comments that, that greet you as well. And then come and join me over on TikTok. Uh, I'm Annie M. Henderson over there as well. And Monday through Friday, we have a 3 p.m. Central Live. And you can join in the conversation. Either <laughs> I have a lot of people that will just kind of watch from the wings and not engage at all. But feel free to share where you're from. Say hi. It's a safe place. The next step I want to encourage you to take is to find spiritual practices that resonate with you. It could be prayer. It could be meditation. It could be going to an actual physical church. It could be walking in nature. It could be mindfulness. There can be different ways. Um, let me grab this really quick and show you. Hold tight. Hold tight. Um, one of my clients actually introduced me to this author and book. It's Hey God, Hey John by John Rodell. Check him out. Highly recommend this book. I usually read it on my lives, so come join us. Um, so it might be having a conversation with God that looks and sounds different than maybe how you were raised. Sometimes we have to deconstruct our faith, right? Maybe what was given to us seems hateful and toxic. And we, instead of running completely the other way, we want to take pieces of this that were full of love and intention and good things and feeling connected to God, but leave the things that are hateful and harmful and inconsistent uh, from when uh, the Bible talked about Jesus. So do something that resonates with you. Don't worry about what other people think about it, right? Because not everyone will get it. Traditional people who have been brought up and think that it's, you know, you have to be have that booty in the pew or that's it. There's no other choice. Um, you don't have to ask them. You don't have to get their permission. Know that you might need to take these baby steps to get back to where you can understand and even trust God again, right? Earlier with self-compassion, we talked about you might have doubts and questions that pop up. If we go back and we think of different chapters and verses in the Bible, that happens there too, right? Jonah <laughs> was on the run. He had lots of doubts and fears. So it's okay that we do too, right? Jesus was still able to use so many fearful people damaged, broken people in the Bible. So let's not think that we are so special <laughs> that we are unusable to God. And the last step is to reach out and get professional help. In other words, with a trained counselor or a life coach, um, finding someone. Now, there are Christian counselors out there, and that can mean a whole variety of things. So do your research check it out. Um, <laughs> little personal story here. Um, when my kiddo was wanting to, to go see a therapist, I, I remember asking her, would you like a life coach or a therapist? And she was like, yes. And I was like, all right. Um, one of her father's stipulations was that it needed to be a Christian counselor. So we were like, oh my goodness. Uh, because right with um, conversion therapy and real things that are still going on out there. We wanted to make sure that we got someone uh, that was going to be able to support our kiddo. Uh, less of a concern for him, but so we did it and, and this therapist was great at what she did, right? She was able to provide that kind of support if she needed it, but that is not something my kiddo wanted to access with that therapist. So doing your research, um, and it might be some of us like to find uh, a therapist that is that are that's like us. Some of us like to have a therapist that is like us. So it might be finding a female therapist or a female coach. It might be someone of the same skin color. It could be someone that is LGBTQ, um, just like you. 
or sometimes we want the opposite, right? Sometimes, oh, I have some triggers around women. I would like a, a male coach. Or maybe it's about energy and what you feel when you're listening or talking to them. So reach out, right? The stigma that used to be around therapy, I feel like that is starting to die down, right? Mental health matters. It's about you. It doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. You take care of you in the best way possible. And if you want to hop on a phone and see what it's like to talk to me uh, about what it is that you're struggling with, you can go to AnnieMHenderson.com and sign up for a consultation call. And I would love to work with you and help you along this journey. So, so many uh, resources, <laughs> books, uh, sites, um, free groups to join that were mentioned in this. If you miss some of them, go back and watch it. If you know somebody who might need some of this information, uh, share or tag them in one of these videos so that they also have resources and information. I want you to remember that your journey is unique and I want you to go at your own pace. There is no finish line with time, self-reflection, and support. You can work through your fears and find peace and acceptance in both your faith and your identity as a queer person. Let me know in the comments which one of these steps that you will be taking next. So what did you think? Uh, I just shared eight different steps for getting over this fear and moving forward. Which one spoke to you? Um, if you're already through this journey and you were just watching this one out of support for me, thank you. Um, or two, uh, you were just, cur just curious, maybe what steps would you have wished you'd spent more time on? Or which step was a big struggle for you? Share in the comments so we can all learn and grow together. I hope to see you back here next week as we talk about negativity bias and how it impacts your life and your decisions.